Hi folks. For a few months now, I've been working on a new course on printing with my Photocascadia colleague, Zach Schneff. It's set to come out in May 2022, so depending on when you're watching this video, it's either coming soon or it's already available. Now, while I was working on a chapter in the course about bit depth, riveting topic, I know, I was reminded of something that I know trips people up in Photoshop all the time. It's something called false banding. I think we all know that as long as we're opening and editing 16-bit image files in Photoshop, we shouldn't experience color banding even if we do real heavy adjusting. But if you're editing an 8-bit file, that's a whole different story. For example, on this 8-bit file, I'm going to make a couple of really drastic adjustments. Now, these aren't adjustments we'd ever really make to an image. They're just to make the point. So I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer. And to this one, I'm going to bring the highlights point way down so that my output is about 20. I'll just go ahead and enter it manually so I can hit it exactly. And that makes the image almost entirely black. So that, like I said, is a really aggressive adjustment. And now I'm going to add another curves adjustment layer. And I'm going to counteract that first adjustment with the second curves adjustment where I just bring that highlights slider all the way over here and I want to exactly match it. So let's take it to 22 also for the input. And so now that adjustment really has just brought the image back to where it was, but look at all that banding because we're adjusting an eight bit image. Now let's jump over to the 16 bit version of this same image and let's do those same adjustments. So in my first curves adjustment, I'm going to take the output to 22. And in my second curves adjustment, I'm going to take the input to 22. And wait a minute, even though I'm editing a 16 bit image file, there's banding. There shouldn't be banding there. Well, don't worry. This banding isn't actually there. It's called false banding. And here's what's going on. In Photoshop, generating a 16-bit preview for an entire 16-bit image file that also has multiple layers is very memory intensive and would affect Photoshop's smooth and fast performance. So when you're viewing a large portion of a multi-layered 16-bit image, Photoshop serves up an 8-bit preview on screen. The banding that we're seeing right here is in the preview, but not in the actual 16-bit image file. Let's watch what happens when we zoom in. So we're currently at just a little over 30% magnification. So there's 33, banding's still there. There's 50, banding is still there. But now at 66.7%, the banding has gone away. So what's happening here is that Photoshop has now served up a 16-bit preview because it only has to display a small portion of the entire image at any one time. And when viewing the image in 16-bit, even with those extreme adjustments, we can see that there is no banding. And if you are seeing any banding, that is in the video and the video compression, which can also create banding. <laughs> but as I'm actually viewing it, there is no banding at all. So if you're editing an image and you see banding, one way that you can check to see if it's actually there is to zoom in to 66.7% or larger. And if the banding goes away, then you know it's false banding. Let's jump back over to the 8-bit file that we made those same adjustments to and try zooming in on that. So here's 33, 50, and the next one will take us to 66%. Let's see. At 66% and even at 100%, that banding is still there. So that banding is actually in the 8-bit file. This is a great illustration of why you don't want to edit 8-bit files, but you do want to edit 16-bit files because this is the 8-bit and this is the 16-bit. But what if you want to see how your adjustments look without banding, but also while viewing the entire image? Fortunately, you can trick Photoshop into displaying a full image 16-bit preview in a couple of different ways. One way is that you can flatten all of the layers. 
When there's just a single layer, Photoshop automatically generates a 16-bit preview for the full image so you can see it without the banding. And then when you're done, you can just go back in the history to get your layers back. The other thing you can do is go to the top layer and then Control Alt Shift E or Command Option Shift E on a Mac or just use this button in the TK panel to stamp the current state of the image all into one single layer at the top of the layer stack. Because this layer is blocking all the layers below, it again forces Photoshop to generate a full 16-bit preview for the image. And when you're done previewing that, you can now just delete that layer and go about your business. Now, like I said, we almost never make adjustments this aggressive in our images, but even lesser adjustments can create that false banding. But most of the time it's very slight and isn't as distracting as this extreme example. Okay, so to wrap up, remember that if you're editing an 8-bit file, the banding is probably really there. Zoom in to 66.7% or more to double check, but my advice here is don't edit 8-bit files. But once you've edited a 16-bit file, if it's been converted to 8-bit, go ahead and view, post, or share 8-bit files. 8-bit files look just as good as 16-bit files as long as you don't make more adjustments to them. If you are editing a 16-bit file and you see banding, remember that it's most likely false banding in Photoshop. And to check and make sure, you can do one of three things. You can zoom in to 66.7% or more. You can temporarily flatten the image into a single layer. Or you can temporarily create a stamped layer at the top of the layer stack. Okay, that's all I have to say about that topic. I hope it was a useful tip and I also hope that you're enjoying viewing all of my YouTube content without any ads. Thanks for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you again soon.